But the second part of this, the second group of people that are infiltrating this, uh, this movement, these protests, is Antifa. And the thing about Antifa is they want chaos. They want violence. It's part of their mantra. They want violence in the, the streets. They do want to overthrow the capitalist system. And one of the ways that you can do that, you can look back at Saul Alinsky, Cloward and Piven. You look at all the socialist and communist revolutionaries through history. They all believe that the way that that had to take place, I mean, even including Adolf Hitler, there's a reason that he had the brown shirts. They all believe that it had to happen with giant civil unrest primarily with groups of people creating chaos in the streets. That's their goal. They don't really care about black people. They would pay lip service to it, sure. But ultimately, they don't really care about that. They really care about the socialist revolution that's going on, and if they can use black people to get there, well, then that's fine with them. And here's some proof of what I'm saying. There is an infiltration by Antifa by people, by the way, who primarily aren't even black. There are some black people in Antifa, but if you look at, at pictures, you look at it, it is an organization that is largely overwhelmingly white. If you've seen pictures, and, and remember that Antifa is most active, for example, in the Pacific Northwest, in states like California, Northern California, that, that area, uh, they're especially active in Oregon and Washington, and you'll notice that in pictures there, and, and this partly reflects the demographics of those areas, very, very few non-white people. And by the way, if you look at this clip, you'll see this actually happening in real time. I want you to know this is not... Don't, this do is, don't police people's way Let me tell you this. Themselves. This is not a black woman who's don't putting Black Lives Matter. I just want you to know that when... Right, but y'all y'all doing that for us and we ain't asking you to do that. Listen, don't, don't, don't spray stuff on here when they gonna blame black people for this and black people didn't do it. They not gonna show y'all faces when they see that on their building. They gonna blame that on us. Y'all are part of the problem. News come on, they gonna say we did that. We didn't do that. Stuff like this ain't right. And right there, I think that the woman that is doing the taping, that's actually a pretty brave young lady. And what you're seeing there is... Two women with Antifa, they're dressed all in black with the mask on. They're clearly members of Antifa infiltrating this protest. They're the ones that are there causing the property damage. The people that are there for Black Lives Matter, at least the ones that are standing there, not saying that there aren't violent parts of Black Lives Matter as well, but they're looking on and they're saying, no, no, don't do that. They're going to blame us for that. And Antifa is there putting up, you know, Black Lives Matter and, and all of that stuff, trying to make it seem as though the people there that are protesting are the ones responsible. And when the black people ask them to stop, they ignore them and do it anyway. Like I said, Antifa doesn't care if they have to use black people, doesn't care if they have to use other minority groups. Frankly, they don't even care if it was white people. They don't care what side they're on as long as it leads to a socialist communist revolution. That is Antifa's end goal. They don't care who they have to use or step over to get there. They're trying to turn this into a full-on war between the capitalist system and everybody else. They're trying to stoke those flames. They're trying to fan the flames of chaos in order to remake the world more to their liking, which, by the way, is the Fabian Society's motto, which what led to Antifa. And that's what you're seeing going on here. And I genuinely feel sorry for this lady that it, she sees it, she sees what's going on, she understands these people are not with them. They are there specifically to try to get the media, the police, everything else to blame the protesters for what's going on. This is how infiltration works. It's the same kind of infiltration that I've been worried about for years with things like, for example, the Tea Party. For example, the Second Amendment rally that happened in Virginia. You may remember that when I was covering that, I said, guys, be extremely careful of who you're standing with. Because it only takes a handful of nuts, especially nuts that happen to be armed with firearms, 
Now, granted, I don't think that anything really would happen because those people would be surrounded by good citizens that actually do want to protect people and protect lives that would also be armed to the teeth if they tried to do something at the Second Amendment rally. But all it takes is one person that is there to infiltrate and to try to make the movement look bad in order to completely co-opt and overhaul what is going on. Look at what happened with all of the protest over the coronavirus. There were people at uh, Michigan's state capitol that they just took a picture of a guy yelling at politicians, not yelling at police, yelling at politicians, but the way that they framed it and the way that they cropped it, they made it look as though the guy was yelling at the cops. And that became the symbol of the whole movement. That became the image that the media ran with because they wanted to paint the people in Michigan there with guns protesting and carrying the, the way that the Constitution commands and, and doing so peacefully. They tried to paint them as radical uh, racist and, you know, rabid Trump supporters and all these other things they had not a lot of evidence for, to be perfectly frank. And they tried to co-opt that and make that the symbol of all the protests nationwide. Antifa's doing exactly the same thing here. It's just, instead of the picture being misleading, they're trying to create the misleading image. That's what's going on here. This is how they infiltrate groups. Let's say that the result of this is, is the intended result, and you have a whole bunch of people that get angry at the Black Lives Matter protesters for this. Well, the Black Lives Matter protesters are going to lash out and, and lash back at the people that are angry about this, that don't know that Antifa was the one that was actually responsible that was basically trying to frame them. Well, see, then you wind up with two people in a very heated discussion going at it with one another despite the fact that neither one has technically done anything wrong. Because the, the person on the protesting side, they're like, no, I was there. There was nobody that was doing something like that. They weren't spray painting and graffitiing buildings. They weren't smashing in windows. And the other person's like, but I see the pictures. It's right there. You see how this works? You see how they use this to try to turn people against one another? That's how you do it, gang. There have been multiple reports from different cities. And this is footage of, of just one of it. There's other videos similar to this as well of Antifa just somehow coming across random giant pallets of bricks, which seems super convenient considering they tend to use them to throw them at police officers or smash in windows. Here's that clip. anything that's, I don't know, way off in that footage? Did you notice that, for one, the construction equipment with the giant pallet of bricks and frankly not much else is right there in the middle of the street that they closed the lane and had lane closure signs all up around it? Despite the fact that you don't do road construction with bricks. You lay asphalt. I mean, unless you're building a brick road, which was nowhere in sight, why, why would you have bricks around? And there doesn't seem to be any construction going on in the, the stores nearby or anything. Now, maybe there was, and maybe this is just a weird coincidence, but it seems really odd that there's just a, a random pallet of bricks around when there are going to be protesters that would like to get their hands on some bricks just laying out there. It's almost like somebody left them. Now, I don't know if that was actually the case, but the fact that this has happened over and over again in multiple cities. Oh, and also, isn't it kind of odd that, that one guy, if you saw near the back, he grabs a couple of shovels? It also seems kind of odd to me that workers, whether they're government or not, just have shovels lying around at the, the spot where they work where anybody could just pick them up at any time and walk off with them. That seems pretty odd to me. Seems like they would have to carry those around with them with their equipment. And so there's all these weird things going on with that, and, and maybe it was funded by somebody else. Maybe they're basically just placing them there specifically for the protesters to pick up. 
I'm not saying that I know that for sure, but it seems like an awfully big convenience for that. It's, it's a little too convenient for that to happen. It's almost like, uh, you know, w with a video game, things kind of happen like that, you know, because they specifically designed the video game to be winnable, to, to be like that. And so sometimes you'll find the random item that you just so happen to need to get through the dungeon or the level or whatever that you're in at the time that's there. That kind of feels like what just happened. It's almost like somebody put it there by design for them to find and then use. Ultimately, the message is that they will use black people, they will use George, George Floyd, they will use anything to reach their goal. And if they have to use black people as a stepping stone to get there, oh, they will absolutely do it as they're doing in these videos, in these clips that you can see there. So they managed... This is what really bothers me about this. As I said earlier in the program, they managed to turn something that was largely agreed upon by pretty much everybody into something that is now completely divisive and a hot button issue because of what's going on with the riots. It was a completely uncontroversial thing that has now had controversy artificially injected into it because of the response as opposed to what was going on. This is what Antifa does. They take things that are normally peaceful that Americans can agree on and they interject themselves into it to specifically stir up chaos. That's what's actually going on here. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.